is in our birth doula bag with Kristen Mason and myself, Brittany Brownell. Join us in the comment section of today's episode with questions and what you have in your bag, because um, we love to hear about what you have in your bag. For this episode of Doulaverse, where we talk about all things about being a doula, doula training, and doula talk. two of each item um i don't mm -hmm. have two of this guy but i have two of the back scratchers similar to the um comb mm -hmm. sometimes i like the lightness on their head usually it's just on their back they just like that really <laughs> light up and down mm -hmm. um kind of chill worthy these will extend <laughs> That's cool so I could be farther away without having to punch over, but I don't, I don't usually use these. Um, I was going to say, do you use this very often? No, the clients, I'm usually just with my hands up and down the back instead okay. rather than grabbing a tool. Yeah, that's me as well. Something that is a lifesaver, just about every single birth room I go into, the ball is deflated in some way. It is not filled enough. Mm -hmm. I carry a hand pump. <laughs> I keep it with me at all times so I can put air in those hospital balls because they are never full enough. Mm -hmm. And if they're not full enough, then they're not going to do the job properly. You right. can't get the correct position to get the hips open or to have mm -hmm. them actually bounce and have their knees at a right angle. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really important to have that ball the correct size and mm -hmm. inflated enough to support them properly. So yeah, I got I have a foot one. What? I use my, I have a foot one. I, I hate the that. foot one. I like the feet way better than the hand. <laughs> yeah. I hate the foot one because it falls apart on me. Oh, does it? Yeah. It falls apart. Yeah. And it doesn't take as, it takes up more space in my bag than this. I can just stick That's this true. in the corner mm -hmm. and I, I know exactly where it's at. So I can just easily and quickly grab it out. Whereas mm -hmm. the foot pedal one, you know, the yellow one that came with the ball, mm -hmm. that one, I have to bury it underneath everything because it's too big. <laughs> yeah. And the last time I went to pull it out, it was all broken apart and I could not fix it. I'm like, what am I going to do to blow up these balls? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I asked the hospital for one. And of course they didn't have one. I'm like, well, how on earth are you blowing up these balls to make sure they have enough air in them? You're not using them properly if you don't have air. <laughs> yep. They just, they put air in them the one time and then just left it. Yep. Then they just go. Yep. Um, this is another of um, my overnight kit, part of my overnight care, just my personal care items. Mm -hmm. I carry extra deodorant. This is not usually really my brand. Um, I prefer one that doesn't have the aluminum in it, but in a pinch, since I had it, I just stick it in here. I have disposable toothbrushes for myself, um, which I use. Mm -hmm. And then headache medicine or oh, really? pain medicine. Yeah. Pain relief and my vitamins. I have some vitamins in here because if it's overnight, I want to make sure I have the tools that I need. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm, I take prenatal vitamins because you know, I'm pregnant right. <laughs> and I want to make sure I don't miss that prenatal vitamin. So I have what my body needs to build my own baby. Um, right. And then there are times when I just have a headache. It's been a long night or a long day when you've been awake for an extended amount of time or you're slightly dehydrated, especially pregnant, if, if I get even remotely dehydrated, um, I start getting a headache. So mm -hmm. I chug some water and I take a couple of ibuprofens and I'm back at it. <laughs> right. Yeah, awesome. I carry those things as well for self-care. Um, it's very important to, to have, especially just basic hygiene things. Yes. Um, because yes, your breath does start to smell. And just having your own basic hygiene helps you mm -hmm. be at yeah. your best for your client. You know, mm -hmm. if I don't feel clean and healthy and 
like I can keep going for another couple hours, then it's time for me to go home. Uh, because at that point, I'm not 100%. So if I can do what I can get to 100% so that I can make sure my client, or at least 80%, you know, yeah. more than 50. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can make sure that I am comfortable and I feel like a person and not like just a tool, then, you know, I know I can keep going for a while. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But if I'm like, I feel gross, I feel tired, I'm cranky, it's time for me to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. This is my TENS unit. I keep it in this little bag with all of its different pieces um, with spare batteries because, you know, you don't know. And when someone has decided that they want a TENS unit, you don't want it to die on them. Yes. <laughs> You're in the middle of getting relief from it. Um, if you don't know how to use a TENS unit, I highly encourage you to just put some basic training on it, um, but they're really not, it's not that hard. Watch our video. Uh, Madison and I have a video out on how to use the TENS unit. It's yeah. also, I highly recommend not storing it with the batteries inside of it. Right. Um, if it's something that you don't use on a daily or even weekly basis, your batteries can start to corrode, which then will ruin your TENS unit and you'll have to buy a new one. Um, this is also something that you should have replacement pads for. So yes. I carry replacement pads. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be using the same pads for each individual. They should be a new pad per person. Um, mm -hmm. I do have my example pads in here that when I go to prenatals, you know, those are the pads that I use to show them what it's like, but that's not what I'm going to use at the birth. Once right. I use this pad on a birth, on someone having birth, having their baby, I throw it away when I'm done. <laughs> someone having birth? Yes, having birth. <laughs> Like, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> nope. Well, it can almost work. Okay, so of course I have my Rebozo. Um, it's a really wonderful scarf that has a really wonderful culture and history. Um, I highly encourage you to look into it. It's not something that we'll really have time to go over today, but it's a lifelong tool. We specifically tend to know that in relation to birth, it has all kinds of uses. Um, I would not say this is my most used tool, um, but for people who want to use it, um, it has a lot of different options and it can work really, really well. Yes. I get mine out pretty much every birth, honestly. It's one of the few items that I do get out every birth. That and a couple of the massage balls mm -hmm. come out every birth. Mine's not technically a rebozo. Mine is a baby wrap. Um, it's a carrier, a baby carrier. And it's probably a size three length. A size two length would be ideal. Mine's a little long for what I use it for in the birth space. Um, but a little long I get that every birth short. What? Is it a little long is better than a little short? <laughs> yes, I do like it longer because I can stand up straight when I'm doing sifting. Um, mm -hmm. And if I have a really tall, husband, spouse, significant, you know, whoever that support person is, if they're really tall, they can come up straight. So it is nice having the longer ones because then you're not hunched over and mm -hmm. killing your lower back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I remember at one point mine was too short um, for what my client wanted to do. She wanted to go labor outside in the parking lot. And we went and found an area of trees and grass. And I took my rebozo and threw it up over a branch for her to pull against when she would get into a squat, she was doing malasana. And um, it was just a little too short for those branches. And I like took something else and tied it on the side and it was really funny, but so, <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with it being a little long. You just have a little extra. Yeah, mine's, mine would be a perfect length for that. <laughs> yes, it would. It was a little bit short. I'm, that's one of the things that I'm planning on purchasing for myself. Um, there are a really fantastic websites that you can get on and order authentic rebozos um, that are actually made from artisans in Mexico. Um, and so I want to get on and buy a longer one. Yeah, mm -hmm. a longer one. It does come in handy. It yeah. does mean you have some extra material. Now, say I were to forget my birth bag, you can just use a sheet 
from the hospital. That's totally yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. um, they have bigger sheets and smaller sheets. So you can use a different size. Just ask the nurse yeah. for one. The bottom part of the bed comes off and the mm -hmm. bottom part has its own sheet that's quite small. So. Yeah, and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. So I don't tend to use my rice bag at all. No. Mm -hmm. I never use it. They don't have a microwave in the room to heat it up. Um, my go-to is hot or cold water on a washcloth. Mm. That gets much more use than this. I do have a, a heating pad that it's got a little um, thing inside of it that you kind of move around and then it makes the whole thing get hot, which Ooh. is really cool. But then I have to boil it in order to get it back to its inert state. <laughs> and oh. that's a lot of work. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so yeah and they're heavy heating pads heating pads are great by the way they are safe to use on the lower abdomen during labor um i can all kinds of articles on that um i don't have one right now i left it with a client after her birth because she was having those after birth contractions and i was just going to pick it up from her perinatal um but that just has not happened so she's had my heating pad for like two months oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been looking into, um, you know, it's always, it's your choice whenever you choose to leave something with a client. Um, this is the first time I have left something with someone and not had it returned pretty promptly, but it's fine. Um, so I'm looking into options for wireless ones. This one that I had just had a really long cord. It was like three and a half feet long mm -hmm. um, and various settings so that people could, they could control it their own selves and it would go on their body and there was Velcro um, and it was made for, I got the biggest one they had, so it can go around the pregnant belly, um, whether it's on their back or, um, on their low abdomen. It's pretty much the only pain relief besides the rebozo that I found for the low abdomen. So especially if they're wearing, um, those monitors. And so I can't get the rebozo around their belly. Um, then that heating pad is really good for those menstrual cramp feely, um, contractions. Yeah. That would be amazing if I had one, but I don't. Um, Great so, pain relief. I am going to buy another one. I've had a couple of births since then, and every single time, that's probably my most used item. Every single time, I'm like, oh my goodness, I missed that heating pad. Yeah. You can also jiggle the belly. You literally just grab their belly and jiggle it if you can't get the rebozo around it. It's not nearly as effective as using an actual rebozo, but it does provide pain relief. Yes, that it does. Mm -hmm. So you have a yoga mat. I have a gardening mat. Yep. Um, mine, I use it for if I'm on my knees next to the tub or if my client wants to go on hands and knees in the shower or tub, this just gives them a little bit of knee support. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it. I love the idea of having the yoga mat too. I just haven't purchased one yet because the thick ones are more right. expensive. Well, and it's nice also if you have to stay overnight and they don't have a place for you to sleep. Um, yeah. Pretty frequently. You've got the bed is for the person who's giving birth. <clears throat> the couch or recliner is for their number one support person. And then you're on the floor. And so having, I've, I've slept on this yoga mat on hospital floors. Um, you did it recently. <laughs> I did. I did. Three day birth. Um, and the, having that thick cushiness helps so much. Um, I don't know if it would be possible, uh, to sleep, especially on those hard stone floors. Mm -hmm. Oh, those hard <laughs> floors, man. Something, um, under you. Yeah. So I also carry extra masks, disposable ones, and extra gloves. Every room has gloves. Um, mm -hmm. so I usually use these only at home births. They do come in handy if I need them. Not every hospital room has extra masks available. Mm -hmm. I have actually had to give one to my clients before um, after they had gotten sick and they ended up getting, unfortunately, sick on their mask. And all the nurses were looking at each other like, you have to wear a mask. And she's like, I threw up on it. Do you have one? And they're like, uh, I'm like, hold on, here you go. I cannot believe you people don't have a mask in this room. Like, oh what? <laughs> You're a hospital. <laughs> but I was able to pull one out for her and give her a mask That's so that great. 
Yes. And she was also one that was refusing to get COVID tested. So they're like, you have to wear a mask. Ah! You're like, calm down. People go get one for her. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, and then I have some lemon water facial wipes so that you can kind of clean your face off. Again, it's a self-care item for me and my client of making sure you feel like you're well cared for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Basically, if you use it for your morning routine, just pack a little miniature of it in your bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I do pull these out pretty regularly. So I keep birth recap sheets, comfort measures. I keep um, my clients, when we, fill the, when we fill them out, I'll put their birth plan in here mm-hmm. and make sure I have a copy of that. Mm-hmm. I keep my certifications so that if I need it for the hospital, which I haven't, I haven't had to pull it out recently, but I keep it in here in case I do. Um, and then I keep the universal rights of childbearing women in here so that if I need to pull it out, I can for any advocacy purposes. And then my favorites, I laminated the mile circuit. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Some ball positions, specifically peanut ball positions, because I am a peanut ball ambassador. Mm -hmm. So I got those with my training and Mm -hmm. some labor positions. I don't usually use these for my reference, but if I'm telling a client, I want you to get in this position. It's Mm -hmm. really nice to have a picture. So much easier if you have a photo. Oh, yeah. And and that goes to the peanut ball. Like medical staff, especially when it comes to pushing, just, Mm -hmm. you know, how normal it is it's on it's yes yeah. I love this you know yeah um, I can just say this is the position I want you to get into I'll help you get there mm-hmm. or so I want you to do this position for this reason well how, what is that position okay well here's a picture of that position so I can really guide them into it mm-hmm. without being like ah oh, I don't have a picture hold on let me pull one up on my phone right or trying to describe it to them verbally or something yeah well. They look at me with deers in uh, like a deer in the headlights. So mm-hmm. I keep these. They're laminated. So if they get wet, no big deal. They're not going to get ruined. Yep. Yeah, that's important. The lamination. Assume everything you bring is going to get wet. Yes, including <laughs> yourself. Um, that's why you need spare socks. Water does break on your shoes. I've had a toilet leak on my shoes out of birth. Yeah. Got my, all of my, socks. my entire legs and top I have been soaked head to toe yeah. I've gotten in the shower with my client to give them that support that they need yeah. uh, so having a change of clothes is integral <laughs> I don't always use it but I had a client um, use my clothes huh? bro- I had a client use my clothes yeah um, <laughs> she accidentally uh left out her sweatpants in her birth bag <laughs> rest after giving birth and realized that she had no pants no pants and the one that she what am I gonna wear to the birth center had blood on them yes yeah. she's like well I can go home in the winter in my underwear <laughs> I just pulled out sweatpants out of my bag it's just a really really stretchy sweatpants because I want to be able to move around yeah fine and uh, get down on the floor and move and yeah, um, exactly. and my bag actually has mine that I wore just a few days ago <laughs> yeah so I don't have a fancy fan like Kristen does but I have three handheld fans that are fantastic I actually just got this one from a friend of mine um, a, a friend doula who yeah. uh, knew I also like rainbows <laughs> she found not only rainbows but glittery ones yep Oh, I hate glitter so much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a microplastic the dollar store. Sorry. Yeah, I, I got these ones at the dollar store and they work like yeah. a charm. Like I said, I carry two of just about everything so that I can use one and the support person can use one. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that they feel just as included in the support that I'm giving. Um, whether they want to use it or not is up to them. Mm-hmm. sometimes I usually just pull out one at a time and I'll have them do the fan while I do the massage or we'll switch off um, but just in case maybe mom wants a fan coming from both sides because she's really hot I ha- at least have two options or different parts of her body 
yeah, different parts of the body get hot. You know, maybe she's hot in the back and the front and you just can't cool her off by doing one side. So mm-hmm. I like having two of what I need. Um, mm-hmm. Just like I can be massaging the back while dad massages the legs or, you know, however. Yeah. But that's pretty much it for my birth bag. Um, also important, bring your certification with you. Um, yeah, that's one of the things that we are going to ask you to bring that. Um, so have your cert with you in your bag available. Um, some, I know some doulas will just have it on their, on their phone, but some, I have gone in and they want to actually scan it, um, at a couple of different places. And so, you know, doing what you can to get to your client as fast as possible, make that check-in process shorter, um, and kind of less irritating, you know, (laughs) as good a mood as you can possibly be going into that room. I keep my school birthday, my donut, my birth photographer, and I keep the um, shoulder dystocia training certification all in my bag. Oh, really? You keep that in there too? I do. So that if someone says, oh, we're having some shoulder dystocia, I can be like, oh, look, I've had training in this. Let's try this. Very cool. I'm trying to find... (laughs) Here we go. It's in this pocket. I also keep my wooden spoon. Yes, your ah. wooden spoon. This is a rebozo tool. Um, so I keep it in there just in case. Um, it's really helpful if you don't have a support person to help you when you're trying to do back pressure and rebozo and massage all at the same time. It's kind of an extra hand that you can just kind of set in spin that rebozo and then it stays mm-hmm. i don't have one it's something i need i keep looking for it and i can't seem to find a nice wooden spoon any, anywhere really? they're all plastic now oh yeah. yeah it's one of those tricks that i teach when i go to the prenatal too i go in and i bring my birth bag but i don't actually use anything in it to teach them because i want them to be able to do all of the things that i'm doing with things that they have in their house and so it's like a, a fun let's go find something that looks like this it's always really funny when they come back with a plastic spoon and that's going to break. Yeah, that's gonna break. <laughs> it's not going to work for you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that won't hold the pressure. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea though, to have them use what you have in their house so that, you know, they're not going, well, she told me this and I'm in labor and I need some of these support measures, but mm-hmm. I don't have her birth bag. So that's exactly. a great tip. I've had too many clients experience prodromal labor mm-hmm. to you know, and what are you going to do? Leave them your birth bag? What if you need it? <laughs> you know? well, what if I'm you have sure one that. client at a time? Um, or they take something out and then you get to the hospital or birth center and it's not there anymore. Yes. <laughs> All so, of these things. Something else I carry, you're going to be like, why do you carry a bag? Those wet clothes we were just talking about need to go somewhere. Yes. I don't want them to go in my bag to make everything wet. So I have a plastic bag shopping bag doesn't take a gallon ziplock I put my I put my clothes that I'm going to be wearing in the ziplock um and then if they get wet then I put them in a seat mine are just sitting in here all loose right now because um I used them so yes (laughs) just spare shirt spare pants underwear socks I actually always bring three pairs of spare socks because I get wet socks (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you don't. it's just so often you know, water leaks on them or uh something gets spilled on them or I'm in the shower or the it water from the tub gets on it and I just don't like wet socks so I keep three pairs it happens it in case my um, my badge carrier breaks on me I keep extra badge carriers oh and really then- okay cool yeah. And then a lot of times, you know, I have a great relationship with the nursing staff and, um, I'll leave a card. So I, can, Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I'll take my cards with me and, um, I'll pass those out sometimes. I'm out. I need to restock. <laughs> I've got them in my room. I just need to go grab some. I have this little on the front part, this unzips right here. And I keep my uh-huh. card just right there for easy access. Um, yeah. I, just, I just have it in a small little it's I don't know if it's a purse or I think I had it for a camera case back when I was a teenager when they had <laughs> those little cameras so I, cute. perfect to hold business cards yeah that is perfect <laughs> yeah it's 
perfect. It's the perfect size. It just holds, and it holds almost entire like ream of business cards. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess. So I keep this in my purse, not my birth bag because I use it all the time, but it's always in my purse. Um, this is a tablet. Um, and the reason that I do that is I have downloaded um, Prime Video on here. And sometimes distraction is what your client needs and the TV options that they have are terrible. Um, and yes. so honestly, I watch movies with my clients. I, I keep forgetting to make a client only um, profile, but my <laughs> options that they send me are so all over the place because different people like to watch different things and I let them pick. Um, but so I, I do that on here and then it's also really easy to be able to pull things up and it's quite large and I can show it to them on here. Um, this is my distraction tool, note-taking tool, all of that. Um, I, have, uh, I, have a portable charger. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a portable charger that I also have in my purse that I bring with me to every birth. Um, and it's got both types of plugins. So because a lot of times they're not able to plug their phone in while they're in bed because it's so far away. And so just having that little, it's like a little brick that they can then just set and then they can charge their phone in the bed or I can charge my phone. If I've been there for a long time and I haven't been able to plug it in and leave it um, and they're wanting me to take pictures and things like that, then I can have that and I just put it in my pocket. So yeah, I keep a charger in my camera bag, which also acts as my purse. Right. Um, <clears throat> that's where I put my wallet and my car key. I mm -hmm. actually have more snacks in there. Um, whether I'm pregnant or not, I like having my snacks. <laughs> right. But especially when I'm pregnant, you don't want me hangry. <laughs> so. I'm a faster. I don't like to eat when I'm in a birth space. Um, I don't eat a lot when I'm there, but I want to make sure that I have food for mm -hmm. when I do start to get fatigued. I don't want to leave the room if I, I can have some snacks with me. So I make sure to have plenty of snacks. Yeah. Plenty to eat. Protein uh, bar, bone broth. I did a 30 hour birth where all I did was have just one cup of bone broth and I was at hour 26 and I, that's all I needed. I mean, bone broth is magic. <laughs> well, I, I would need more than that, especially being pregnant. <laughs> I, I'm not pregnant. I haven't been. My youngest is four. So <laughs> and I intermittent fast every day. So my body is very naturally in a fasting state. Yeah. Um, the last thing I have in there is a Bluetooth speaker that is waterproof. Yes. Waterproof. Yep. Mine's sitting right there. It's not yeah. in my bag. My children use it. Sometimes. Mine's in my bag. I haven't actually set it up, so I'd have to sync it. But <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, if my client has a wireless monitor on. I can't use that. We need to turn the Bluetooth off if they have a wireless monitor on because I found that it interferes with the monitor and then we have to go with the intermittent monitoring anyway, the strap monitors. So if I turn that off and I tell my clients, turn your Bluetooth off, we have less problems with the monitor and we can keep that on for longer. Right, because those portable ones that use Bluetooth um, yeah. the portable monitors, I should say, because obviously the portable speakers. Use yeah. Those wireless ones that they just kind of, they stick on. They're really cool. I have an awesome picture from one, but. Oh, they're so cool. Especially when they're waterproof as well. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, really be able to labor in the tub. If you're doing intermittent monitoring on, and you have to get out every 40 minutes to go get back on that monitor. It's, it's. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. Because as someone once explained, once you're in the tub, it is the most relieving location. And it is totally against your instincts to get out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. My second birth, I had to get out twice. Oh. Leave my house to go to the hospital and one at the hospital to go push. And I, both times they had to drag me out of that tub. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you're kicking and screaming like, no, don't make me get out. It's a water birth. So the second one is like, this is wrong. Yeah, don't make me get out, please. Um, but that's pretty much all I have in my bag. It seems like a lot. I don't know. I feel like the majority of it is needed, even if I'm not going to use it every birth. Uh, and there, I mean, there's definitely, there can be excess things in your bag and that's okay. Um, you know, 
it's not a big deal to have some extra small items that maybe you don't really use that often. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot more room in my bag than I actually use that I used to have when I first started doing this, a lot of stuff in there that eh, I never used. So eventually took out, um, yeah. but that's fun. That's okay. It's good to experiment. And then sometimes when you do get to use that one random odd thing, one, it's very impressive. And your clients are like, oh my gosh, you're so cool. You have X whatever in there. Yeah. Um, and well, again, you have gum, you have, you know, this essential oil that I love. You have, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, a spare toothbrush for me. Um, you know, if I'm going to a home birth, I keep hadsicles that pop and they get cold um things like that because at the hospital they have them there but at the home birth they unless they bought the kit they might not so just in case um you know things like that and your birth bag is going to change on if you're going to a hospital birth center or home birth yes yeah so. i i don't have a lot that i change out um but it's it does change the items that i'm using from mm -hmm. space to space yeah for sure I don't need to necessarily worry. I mean, this is just where I store this at this point. This is just, I know that this isn't here. Um, I always keep my name badge in my purse. I'm always going to bring my purse to the birth. Um, things like that. Yeah, my name badge is in my camera bag because that's what I'm carrying day in and day out. And it has my Bella Baby badge on it too. So I just switch out my doula with the Bella Baby badge back to forth. Yeah. Um, but I carry that and wear it on a daily basis. So, <laughs> but exactly. I know some people that will have things like nipple shields and stuff in there. Um, I don't uh, personally, um, but there are all kinds of tips, tricks, and tools, depending on what all your different certifications are in that you can bring. Um, and if you've got something super cool in your doula bag that we didn't cover, put it in the comments, put a link in the comments so that Brittany and I can make our overstuffed bags even more full. Yes, I've, I'm, I'm always not. looking for more. Madison carries affirmation cards in hers. Yes, mm -hmm. I do not. I encourage, I ask my clients to make their own as a cheat for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I know what their favorite sayings are. Yeah. Um, I actually took a really cute picture of one of the affirmation cards that she made. Um, just a couple days ago was you're going to meet your baby soon. And I took a picture of her holding her baby and I had the card that I was holding out. Anyway. Super cute. And also very personable to them. You know, that's the point of affirmations. You want them to be personable. Um, exactly. So then you know exactly what speaks to them and I'll actually take them and lay them out. And then I'll tell the partner if they have one other support person or just myself, read off these, that you know what speaks to her. Just say what's here. That's right. These are what speak to her. So use these. All right. Well, we got to shut us down because we've been at this a long time. I'm so sorry. It's a long video. I hope you got a lot out of it <laughs> and um, enjoy this episode of Bumpaholics with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you can learn more information about our organization at caseywomensministry.org. We sell items on um, our bonfire page so you can support the ministry while getting a birth worker shirt or yeah. plug. Um, we even have hats and masks yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. You can check out some of our training videos on Udemy. Um, but otherwise, you can continue to follow us on YouTube with our Bumpaholics channel. And you can follow us on anywhere that you can access podcasts. Each mm -hmm. of our videos are also audio only for podcast, uh, podcast consumption. If you haven't already, send us a comment. Um, let us know what you thought about the video. Let us know if there's something we, you would like us to cover. Like our page, subscribe to our page so that you get um, all the notifications when new episodes come out on a weekly basis. We really love having you here and we will see you again real soon. Bye.